Hi, welcome to this presentation on the new developer features we have in Oracle WebLogic Server 1213. Oracle WebLogic Server 1213 is a new version release of Oracle WebLogic Server 12C. It builds on the features provided in earlier releases such as WebLogic Server 1212 and in this release we've aimed to improve developer productivity, performance, high availability and manageability. We're trying to enable you to develop and deliver innovative, modern mo mobile oriented applications, to meet the application service level requirements that you have for your business, to manage your application infrastructure efficiently in order to achieve the total cost of ownership goals that you have set out for your business. In the WebLogic Server 12.1.3 release, we've placed specific focus on enabling the development of server applications that support rich client applications developed to utilize HTML5 browsers or mobile devices. What we see in the industry is that these applications typically rely on REST-based web services to access data. They use JSON as the data format for message payloads and quite often they're requiring dynamic updates so messages to be sent back and forth between clients and servers and now servers and clients in order to provide the rich user experiences that customers are expecting. With Oracle WebLogic Server 12.1.3 we've implemented support for a select set of Java EE7 APIs including JAX RS 2.0 the Java API for JSON processing, the Java API for WebSocket, and the Java Persistence API 2.1. We believe that the addition of these specifications will enable and support the development of these rich mobile style applications. On top of that, we've also delivered some related value-added capability like providing support for the service and event programming model, and an also a WebSocket emulation capability that enables WebSockets to be used where support doesn't exist in network infrastructure or in the browsers that are being used amongst the client base. At its core, WebLogic Server 12.1.3 is a Java EE6 based release. So it supports Servlet 3.0, JPA 2.0, EJB 3.1, the CDI 1.0 spec, and so forth. What we've done in this release is provided targeted specification updates for JAXRS to bring in the JAXRS 2.0 specification. And we've also provided a mechanism to update at JPA level to 2.1. We've also added brand new API support with the Java API for WebSockets and also the Java API for JSON programming. Looking at how Java E is typically used to support mobile and rich clients on the back end, we can see that the standard APIs and services that the container provides through the servlet layer, EJB, CDI, JPA and JMS provide significant value and developer productivity for people to build these sorts of applications. We're also seeing in the marketplace the growing use of JAXRS to create RESTful based web services. We're seeing uh, the increased use of JSON to describe message payloads that are being exchanged between clients and servers. And we're also seeing the emergence of the use of the uh, industry standard WebSocket protocol to enable clients and servers to establish a bi-directional persistent connection that enables either party to send messages at any point in time. These specifications really do help the development of applications that run within the HTML5 JavaScript arena utilizing the rich framework such as Ember, Angular uh, and so forth and also the native mobile devices such as iOS and Android and applications built using those specific platforms. 
This is why we believe that the addition of these specifications, which we have targeted in this release, can help make the WebLogic Server 1213 release a very, very attractive release for people building back-end services to support mobile and rich clients. WebLogic Server 1213 provides industry standard WebSocket support through the implementation of JSR 356. Early releases of WebLogic Server, namely WebLogic Server 1212, provided support for the WebSocket protocol with a proprietary programming API. That has now been deprecated in the 1213 release and replaced with the Java API for WebSocket 1.0 standard which is included in the Java EE7 platform and the Glassfish 4.0 release. This specification and standard essentially allows developers to define what are known as WebSocket endpoints that can respond to different events that happen on a WebSocket connection. Examples of those events might be an on open event, an on close, an on error, and the more um, widely received on message event. So as messages are received by one of these endpoints, the onMessage method is invoked, the message received for the, for the application to consume and use and possibly send, uh, send a message back to the peer that sent the original message or broadcast messages out to a, a set of connected peers. The interesting thing, as I mentioned earlier, is that the WebSocket protocol enables bi-direction communication to actually happen. So by this we mean that once the client has initiated a connection to a server and that connection remains open, the client or the server at any point in time can send a message to its peer. This really does facilitate the server sending data on an as-needed basis to clients to display and respond to. One of the value add capabilities that we've provided in WebLogic Server 1213 is our WebSocket emulation feature. Whilst WebSockets is a very appealing uh, development paradigm and a, and a connection model, and it is supported by many of or by most of the recent versions of all the major browsers, there obviously exists some pockets of usage of uh, network infrastructure, so proxies and firewalls, and also browsers themselves that don't understand how to talk and use the WebSocket protocol. So in that case, we provide a mechanism with WebLogic Server 1213, which enables developers to still build their applications utilizing the WebSocket API on the server and utilizing the WebSocket API on the clients, say for example through JavaScript. And what we are then able to do is fall back to a different tr uh, transport mechanism, in this case a HTTP long polling mechanism, such that the client and the server still believe and actually still are talking WebSockets at the application points. But the actual transport mechanism used to send the WebSocket messages is actually conducted over a HTTP long polling transport. This essentially enables us to support a common code base for an application and fall back and handle the communication in a different way when the preferred WebSocket connection and WebSocket protocol is not available. So this is what we, we believe is a, a significantly value-add feature of this release. Another Java standard specification that we've updated in this release is the Java API for RESTful services. This release provides support for two versions of JAX-RS. By default, WebLogic Server 1213 uh, has JAX-RS 1.1 enabled on it. So deploying an application to an out-of-the-box WebLogic Server installation will actually have JAX-RS 1.1 available for it. What we've been able to do with this release, though, is provide an optional capability to, um, to support and enable the use of JAX RS 2.0. And this is done through the provision of a, of a uh, WebLogic shared library that contains the uh, JAX RS 2.0 API, 
um, the Jersey 251 implementation of that specification and a number of other uh, libraries to support uh, service and events and different media types and so forth and that shared library can be deployed to WebLogic server and then referenced by applications that are deployed to it. What that will then do is override the default JAXRS 1.1 implementation and provide the new JAXRS 2.0 API and the implementation to that application. So on an application by application basis they can selectively choose to override and use JAXRS 2.0. This enables the application to then make use of some of the, the compelling, some of the compelling new features in JAXRS 2.0, such as the uh, standard client API to enable um, client invocation of RESTful services, not just JAXRS oriented services, but any RESTful based service, to enable that to be utilised from applications deployed to uh, WebLogic Server in this case. So if you have a server, an EJB, an MDB, even another JAXRS service that needs to invoke a RESTful service to get some information, that can all be done uh, using the standard client API. There's also support for asynchronous processing to enable the server to um, have better throughput when it's utilised. Uh, there's a filter and interceptor model to enable us to, to sort of uh, have some sort of aspect-oriented approach to, to working with JAXRS resources and entities to enable us to you know, handle and intercept um, um, uh, requests and responses as they're passing through in order to manipulate them in specific ways. One of the bonuses we get from having JAXRS 2.0 available in our server is that we're utilising um, the Jersey implementation of the JAXRS specification as the underlying um, basis for our support. One of the things we get with server with uh, Jersey is support for the service and event programming model. So again, looking at that overall application style where we have um, servers that need to push data to clients in order for them to receive, you know, real time up to the minute data streams such that they can actually have user interfaces that respond to activities as they occur or to, to message streams as they occur. So yet again, service and events works into that particular program model and again adds value to WebLogic Server 1213 by enabling server push to be done. In this case, service and events piggybacks on top of the HTTP protocol. So unlike the WebSocket protocol, it's using the existing HTTP protocol. And in this case, we're really looking at a unidirectional approach. So in this case, once a client has established a connection with a server, the server then sends messages back over that connection. It no longer receives messages from clients. This enables us to actually send many messages over a single connection and the, um, the JavaScript event source object that is uh, defined as part of the W3C JavaScript um, HTML5 uh, working body has actually provided mechanisms to enable connections to automatically be reconnected and retried in case of failure. So what we have here is a, a connection that is left open, the server can send data at any time and the client can automatically retry uh, for a new connection in the case of failure. And there are some, some um, opportunities available within the service and event model to enable us to pass in message IDs and to, which we could utilise to do message catch up in case of clients missing messages etc. The service and event model um, provided by Jersey takes a RESTful approach so it enables us to annotate uh, plain old Java objects um, with RESTful style uh, annotations to enable us to actually create the objects uh, event outputs and ev uh, event objects that we can send back to the client through the through the REST implementation. This is um, again, as I've mentioned, a feature provided by Jersey, and it's something we've uh, decided to include in our WebLogic Server JAX RS 2.0 shared library. So this capability is there, ready, waiting for developers to use with WebLogic Server 12.1.3. Another of the new Java APIs that we've added in this release is the Java API for JSON processing. 
So WebLogic Server 12.3 has um, bundled in and integrate the, um, the reference implementation of this specification. It's only a, a fairly small library and this was worked on by a number of people that have worked in the industry around the JSON space and they have for Java consolidated around um, uh, you know this, this Java API for JSON processing specification and collaborated together. So now for the Java platform we have uh, you know a focused Java API for working with JSON. It enables us to essentially generate JSON payloads and it enables us to parse JSON payloads in an efficient fashion. It's got two different structures to it. It has an object model API um, which enables us to represent JSON very similar to utilising DOM in the XML parser world. And it also has a streaming API to let us produce and consume JSON. So in this case it's very similar to the Stacks API that we've seen uh, again in the XML parser world. So this just provides a nice programming API for working with JSON from Java. Here's a brief example of what the API looks like. So it's a fluent API that enables us to, to construct together multiple method calls that enable us to chain together operations and in this case actually produce a JSON uh, message from, uh, from adding uh, Java types and Java objects to, uh, to a JSON builder. Again, very natural, very fluent for people to use. The final thing I just want to touch on in this release is that um, with WebLogic Server um, and Fusion Middleware, we've been making um, inroads and, and great strides in terms of providing support for Apache Maven. In 12.13, we've carried that forward, and at the Fusion Middleware level, you will see um, significant new capabilities around supporting the use of Maven from various aspects of the SOA framework, etc. Um, WebLogic Server 12.1.3 has carried forward the work we did in the 12.1.2 release with the WebLogic Maven, the um, synchronization plugin, the artifacts we're producing now. Of note, one new thing we've added in this release is a new goal called WST-Client. And what that does is enables us to execute WST commands and scripts completely independently of a WebLogic server installation. So in this case, you may have Maven running on a developer machine or on a test machine, and you need to construct some resources against WebLogic server running remotely on a server farm somewhere. On that test or developer machine, you do not need to have WebLogic server installed any longer in order to actually execute WST against that remote server. It can now all be done in a purely remote sense. So that actually really does help WebLogic Server further work within continuous integration services, system setups, etc., by enabling us to do whole of lifecycle management of WebLogic Server instances and resources all from, within the all from within the province of a Maven project. So a small but important extension there in the 12.13 release. Okay, with that I'll finish up. Um, thank you very much for listening. We're um, very proud to have Oracle WebLogic Server 12.13 uh, available for use and we look forward to hearing your uh, experiences.